No, I'm late to the party and, and I always will be. That's how I live my life. I'm always behind, right? Except when I'm in front, which is in terms of what this class and last class is going to be about. I might be ahead off into a pasture that'll never be relevant, right? So, but that's okay. That's what I do, right? So, so there's a line in there and I was trying to find it. And so I was like scrambling for it in the, in the, in Sunday's marginalian, but something, it's all about wonder, um, which as you know, clearly I'm, I'm a wonder guy. I hope that's, if you take nothing else from what I'm sharing, it's, I'm trying to hope you become a yoga student in a way that leads with wonder and exploration and door opening and stuff while staying grounded. But the, the line was something like, and I wanted to get it just right, and I wanted to give the person credit, um, that wonder is like discovering a submerged sunrise, which I love that, right? That like, that if you just wonder a little bit about what your life is and you go a little bit, right? Suddenly it's a sunrise, right? It's like there's a whole, there's so many other worlds that are waiting for our discovery because everything is given, right? It's nothing's being denied you in this experience, by the way, right? You're worthy to get it all. So, so, so I love that. But so to give you, I, I was going to challenge someone to give a synopsis of last week, but I don't even think I can do it. But as you know, I was trying to say that the inward dimension of centering, but also our parasympathetic nervous system and the quieter part of our consciousness, right, might actually be one of the best only ways we can touch the sensation of eternity in a literal sense, right? Where, where, and whether it's eternity or the fact that human beings are, our consciousness is, is deeply affected by the sense of expanded time, right? So we go to history places and we, we, we go to all these different, when we can feel time, when time becomes a sensation, our consciousness deepens and transforms, right? And so we have all these different ways we say that. Those who don't study history are bound to repeat it. We try to, for a year, for a million, you know, for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, we've been, we've been um, honoring our ancestors. We try to have our history, you know. Any way that we can get our plane field bigger than our own self hubristic consciousness is a good thing for human consciousness, right? And I say in our minds, part of the idea last week was that our minds, I'm sorry, apparently it didn't record well. So that whole class is lost to the ether, which I think is itself funny um, and sad and a testament on my life, right? Um, that, that the, the, um, this ability to transpose um, time and expansive time into sensation is a crucial realization for human consciousness and our minds can't do it very well. And I use the example of, I try to think I'm okay by using this water bottle until it literally breaks, but this is actually 6 million years, right? Right, and my mind can't, my mind can't really get to the fact that this is six million. Oh my God, there's a bug in my water. Oh, well, I'm not gonna think about that right now. <laughs> I'm gonna drink some later though. But like that, that, that my mind can't really grasp expansive time, right? That, that six million years is impossible. 13.8 billion years since the Big Bang, right? I mean, I, I saw, I watched a, show like like that was trying to say that our time on the planet would be would be um analogous to like one foot or maybe one inch let's go with one foot on a string that went like across the entire country of, of the of the united states 
right? That that's how long our time's been on this planet. One inch on a string that long, right? And so that kind of helps you think about it, but not really. Our minds fail when it comes to time, right? And that's a big problem for the planet, right? This is a big problem for the environment that we actually can't make this a sensation, right? Because it can't be a thought. Our minds can't really make it organic enough, right? So, so that I'm trying to sum up last week, so you can already tell. I feel bad for the new the newcomer, right? So just try to follow along or not, right? Um, so the other thing I was trying to say, shift last week, and this is all gonna tie into this week. Um, last week was that I was trying to tell you about some of the thought experiments that physicists have about what another, like what the fifth dimension would be experienced as. And their analogy is, is that if if we were two dimensional beings, which our mind are our minds are actually two dimensional, by the way, that's what's so hard about it, and it's screwed up philosophers for a long time. It only inhabits two dimensions, right? So that's why contradiction matters. Blah blah. blah. I could go on all day there, but like so, so you have two dimensional. If we're two dimensional beings, and a three dimensional being came over us. We would only, or if we encountered a three-dimensional being, we would only experience that three-dimensional being in two dimensions, analogous to like a shadow crossing our path, right? In the two-dimensional world, right? So that we literally cannot experience the fifth dimension directly because of the way we're wired, right? And it would appear to us like two dimensions to a two dimensional being of a three dimensional being coming in. I know that sounds confusing, but my point is that maybe the sensation of time and eternity is contained within the experience of emptiness that comes from centering. That that's the shadow coming through us of, of another dimension. So that's the synopsis of that class yesterday. I hope it makes no sense at all, right? Okay, but I want to talk about time travel. Okay, so this class, if I think the, the name is going to be, um, and hopefully it records okay, because we lost the other one, right? Um, time travel trap, time travel trauma and yoga. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm working on this other book and I'm in the very beginning things and there's a line that I've been wanting to see if I can try to put forward in a book, um, which is the question of time travel has already been settled. Uh, the question is whether we can appreciate our own particular version, right? So instead of always thinking that, you know, we kind of want time travel. Well, I can go back and fix that mistake. So we want our version of time travel to be, to be, um, to be causal. Like I could go back and change something, right? But if it's coming across our experience as a shadow, right? I'm not going to be able to causally affect it. But we do time travel. It's called memory. It's called planning for the future. Right, and part of what I'm trying to get across in my work with Bessel van der Kolk and all those those neuro neuroscientists is that, and why you know he's he's advocating for a body based approach to helping people heal trauma, right? Um, and so you know biofeedback and EMDR and 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 you know he's doing even Shakespeare. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different attempts to try to do this. Right, because he's sensing that we are doing it. We can't heal trauma from the mind, right? So psychology should not be leading the healing of trauma or they should at least be more complimentary in their approach, right? And so part of what I want to try to talk about today and also experience in our asana practice is so this idea that, 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 that you know, maybe in our two dimensional way and the shadow, we are able to experience expansive 
time in the quiet part of our autonomic nervous system. Okay, and, then, and we don't get to control it, we just get to have it. And it's an important thing for human consciousness to have when we're getting overly stressed out, okay? Because what I wanna say is 21st century is accelerating time. And as we're accelerating time, we're getting more destructive, right? And this is like a fundamental issue for facing human survival, okay? So what I want to talk about is, and this is what I try to get across to, I've said it a couple of times at the Boston Trauma Conference when I've keynoted, and I don't quite know how to unpack this, but um, kind of do, and I'm going to try it a little bit today, is that maybe in the empty parts of our experience, maybe it's not only time that's there, but the relationship between space and time is much more integrated than we realize, not just in equations and physics, not just because Einstein did it, that in the empty spaces that we carry, we actually carry time. And that if you can help, if you have seen the documentary, Standing Still, Still Standing, what I was able to do was help Brit reclaim the space in his body through the sensation of ease right? Helping him reclaim the space so he could get out of Afghanistan with a crucial part of his consciousness, right? And so I was through the claiming of space, we can touch the time we carry, right? And that it's not just so, a lot of times yoga is used with trauma for agency, Meaning that if I can control my body and I'm autonomous and I'm choosing when I move this and move that, right? All that, right? When, when I'm choosing that, it's a form of agency and control. And that's how it helps a trauma survivor because disempowerment is a powerful part of the injury of trauma, right? Agreed. Except what if yoga is integrating what you can feel and control with what you can't feel and can't control? that the potential of yoga resides in the autonomic part of the nervous system coming into, into action and movement, which is what we're gonna work on in a second, right? So have you ever noticed that churches, old churches are big on the inside? That the Grand Canyon seems ancient exactly because it's spacious? right, that our sensation of time transforms in vistas, our appreciation of beauty transforms with vistas and views, right, that somehow when you're in front of a beautiful vista, you feel it in the cells of your body. And then all of a sudden, maybe you can hear the whisper of the fact that the earth's been here a long time right, that we're just passing through. And all of these things start happening because of space, right? And your appreciation of time, right? So sit up straight and tall. So good God, I, I'm forgetting the, the new person's name, but it's gonna be okay, right? So start the exhale. So the way we carry trauma, I've been trying to, trying to decide if I was gonna tell you a whole personal component of the stuff I'm going through. Well, how long has it been since I've been injured? Like 44 years, 45 years. And I'm having a new level of realization that, that um, so I'm gonna embrace the fact that time travel is possible because I'm gonna discover the submerged sunrise. Okay, and I'm going to know it's not just my imagination. Okay, so, so <clears throat> I'm, I've written, a, I've written a lot about my story, right? And about what happened to me. And, um, and I've talked about it for years, but there's still a part of me or a part of it where I'm, the body I have now 
up until recently has not been the body that was at the accident scene. My mind hasn't allowed it. That I can talk about that person. I can like have stories about that person, right? I can know intellectually that I'm the same body. But in that moment, in those, um, in the battle for survival, as I couldn't breathe and all that stuff, which I can't remember, by the way, right? My, the body I have now was actually the body on that grassy median, right? And, and that boy struggling for survival, that struggle imprints me and imprinted me, even though I can't remember it. And my mind's been trying to protect me ever since. So I'm really good at seeing the worst case scenario. I'm really good at all this stuff because I'm trying to brace for it because I got thrown from the car, right? So I have that anticipation of the, of the, of the violence that's in my cells and then the struggle to survive. And so... I actually am having in my practice, this is why I love yoga. I'm beginning not just intellectually, but I'm realizing the existential fear that imprinted me then, that affected the shape of my mind ever since. And I've turned it into purpose and I formed my body solutions and I did all this shit, trying to, you know, but not letting myself be in the grassy median all the way, right? But what I can do, and I need to practice this realization for the rest of my life, is practice knowing I'm the same body, that it was me on the grassy medium. Doesn't mean I have to remember, I can't remember. I, I had such oxygen de de deprivation that, that, I, that I can't, it, that memory is gone, but it's not quite gone, it's in my body. And so what I need to do <clears throat> is this version of me, needs to go back and sit with the boy in the grassy median and whisper to him that it's okay, I survived. Time travel. Not just memory coming at you, not just the, right? We all get to time travel. We don't get to change it, but I'm still in a version of that survival lock and it's in my DNA. I mean, in not my DNA, it's in my, my nervous system and it's affecting the shape of my mind. So here I come back and I wanna keep whispering to that boy, it's okay, you made it, right? Sit up straight and tall. You got things in your life. Remember, it's a submerged sunrise. You may not be able to get, and this, is a, this has big implications for generational trauma and all this stuff, but I don't want to talk about that today, right? We can't rectify the past. We can be company with our own past, right? Because the spaces in you absorb the time. So as you sit in ground, as I exhale, as I go to the part of my nervous system that is the shadow of multiple dimensions, right? Because we are four dimensional beings, but only kind of, because with time we are forced with the second law of thermodynamics to have time go forward. So we mark the time. Our consciousness is transcendent, but our experience flows forward. You time travel because you have a body, not because you have a mind. You have all the bodies of your entire life and they're here now. They're here for you now. This isn't a thought. 
This is a truth. Because we're time travelers. Because our bodies make transcendence possible within the scope of our finite lives. Soft bend your face, your jaw, the inside of your mouth. There are resources here that you're afraid of. I'm afraid of them. The center of my chest connects to the softness of the inside of my mouth. The skin on my face. I find my sitting bones in my feet. Not because I can feel them. Not because I have faith, but because I can feel them without direct physicality. Balance my head over my neck. Open to the space behind me. Stand tall in my body without overactivating my will. Alert stillness through my spine so I can feel the trees around me the space around me because I'm centered. It was never about your mind. It was about the full potential of your spine. Bring your hands into prayer. If you can, if you go off balance, don't do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'll go off balance. If you can get the bones of your fingers and, and bones in your hands to be attracted to each other, Right? Do that by opening the skin on the center of your palm, whether you can put your fingers together or not. If you can get the bones to go towards each other, the center of your chest will change. If you can maintain the grounding at the heel of the hand, you can touch the earth. It's a submerged sunrise. It's not your imagination. From a centered, grounded place, open to everything because it's your birthright, because it's the gift. All of your time. Don't stick your face into the bad times. Just have all of your times. You earn them. Let go of your day. Prepare your mind to do yoga. Notice the breath into each nostril. The feeling in each lung. Awareness in each sitting bone, in each foot. Everything about your breath fills the entire vessel. On the next inhalation, notice that the skin pores even open and reach out in every direction of the space around you. So right when you're running out of air on the inhale, you're at your most full, your most expansive. And then come back towards the midline. But as you come on the exhale, as you come back towards the midline, extra attention and alertness in your spine. So there's this wonderful expansion that includes your skin the bones in your sitting bones, the bones in your heels. The skin expands on the inhalation. The spine reaches out into the space. And then you start coming back towards midline. And that expansive energy elongates your spine, breaks it more alert as you lose air, as you return air. You don't lose air. You return it to where it started. 
and the earth lets you change it to CO2. Because the trees breathe the CO2 and change it back to oxygen. And we've missed it. Let go of your day. Prepare your mind to do yoga. Good, and then release. Bring your hands down to your thighs, palms up if you can. Take your sternum up toward your chin, your chin down over your sternum. Remember, as the sternum lifts, shoulder blades descend, you ground. The rib cage gets a slightly more alert. That's your spine. The chin stays down in humility. You have slightly more of your shape in this banda, and you honor. You honor it. Keep the inside of your mouth soft. Raise your head up with closed eyes. Mental awareness will harden the inside of your mouth. Mental awareness will harden the top of your spine. Right? The top of your spine is where the expression of language comes out. Right? The base of your spine, the earth, is what makes it possible. One of the things I loved about the overstory was that it got me to deeper hear that we wouldn't be here without plants. We wouldn't be here literally because our breath requires the transformation of what we take, right? And that's what the plants do for us. They create the environment. So sit up again, straight and tall. You're in a unified process when you breathe, made possible by the earth. The space that comes on inhalation, don't waste it. How do you take that and put it into action? So the energy changes on inhalation and it makes it easier for us to lift up through gravity when we're watching the inhalation. Right, so just to make my point quickly, it's like, try to, <laughs> this is horrible. No, don't do it wrong. <laughs> but sometime, right, um, sometime try to inhale, or try to lift your arm up on exhalation, right? It sucks, right? So instead, Follow the expansion. First, ground your sitting bones. Inhale, take your arm up. And then back down. So now this time, I can tell you, I took my arm up before I like utilized and recruited the intercostal muscles on my ribs. But in order to recruit the intercostal muscles of my ribs, I have to get down with my sitting bones and feel my feet. Then try it again. I'm going to make sure I have more attention at the spine. Right? Now, some of you can take both arms up because you're smarty pants, right? I actually lose yoga when I move both arms up because I go off balance and I lose unity to my, with my subtle body between me and the empty space. Right? And take the other arm up. Inhale. Take the other arm up. Ooh, damn, that, that ribcage side doesn't want to open as much. So what can I do to get that to open as much as this side wants to? If 
back down. Well, it turns out I'm going to have to find the earth on exhalation. I'm going to have to set the conditions of groundedness so I can feel the expansion, so my mind can catch up to what's happening, right? Inhale again, take the arm up. Oh, I want it. I want to get at everybody, right? I'm seeing a lack of crispness on the inner edge of your shoulder blades, right? And if you're doing it this way, which is smart, careful not to actually overdo your diaphragm because that'll block the subtle body too. All right, so let's do a little bit of this lightning rhythm stuff. Amanda, do you mean to be asking a question? Okay. Um, so we're gonna get this lightness, right? Because remember, the subtle body, <laughs> this is so annoying. The subtle body is perpetually light, right? Lighter. The problem is the lightness has no meaning without the earth. So you're moving around, you're changing gravity. And you're, so this next one, when you lift your spine up, right? So I'm like, <clears throat> I'm finding, and I want you to find your own equivalent. Like imagine you made every action for a second of yoga pose, right? So, um, <clears throat> so, I've got one hand on my foot pedal, on my, on my pedal, other hand on my, so I'm finding the best grounding I can right here. And so when I lift and create the space up, I'm able to lift well my tailbone up to the center of my chest. Remember, I'm looking for spaces now, right? Because I'm trying to touch time right, and then go the other way, right, so I'm doing it both ways, because I know from enough yoga that I want to be working equally from side to side, so here I am again, so I'm not just trying to open my muscles, I'm actually trying to create a sensation of the empty part of integration, trying to figure out how to make the shadow be connected to the other dimension, right? So then if you want to get more physical again, which a lot of us do in the being of yoga practice, right? You do stuff like this, where the intercostal muscles actually get stretched, right? Because then your mind actually thinks it's more real because it's got feedback from the muscles in the rib cage, right? Because the mind constantly doesn't know what's real and what's not. Right, we call that like schizophrenia. Right? And then release. The mind can totally lose what track of what's real. The obvious implication is that if I think I can go back to the accident scene, I must be schizophrenic because it can't be real. I call it bullshit. Right? I have all those times in my body. Right? I got them all. I got the moment just before. I got the moment just after. And my mind is not the carrier of my time. Take your legs wide. So most of us, especially as we age, we tend to stop integrating the bottom of our spine with the space around us, right? Because it's it's not what human beings should do as you age, right? That's too bad, right? So you're going, again, we're getting that growing more open, we're changing gravity, right? We're doing a whole bunch of things that we do every week, right? The thing about yoga practice, and this is one of its superpowers, is that the yoga practice is the same. That's what's, that's its strength whether you can receive can you deepen the receiving of what's already happened right so yeah i can that's what i'm going to go for i'm going to try to go for this right back to tadasana back to the midline so I, for me it helps to do this i don't know what you need to do to make sure that this river 
this river down the inner seam gets more definition. So I can get the connection between the core channel and the lift in my chest because I'm looking for spaces, right? I'm not, I don't need to go into every memory and every mental memory. I need the spaces, right? <clears throat> Good. And of course, some of the agency helps. So some of the willful part of yoga helps. So come forward and lift up. Let's do a couple of like sun citations, kind of or upward facing dots. Like, so when I inhale, right, that helps to lift to the chest and then release. The problem is if I get all caught up in the inhalation as I come forward and lift my chest, broaden the space between the shoulders. What happens when I broaden the space between the shoulder blades? Huh. I mean, we've been, we've been working on this for weeks now, right? So I'm coming forward, upward facing dog, but I'm not just going with my will. I'm broadening the space between my shoulder blades. And I'm finding the earth when I do that. Good, and then release. So I have an expansion this way, but I got to stay grounded this way, right? So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to come forward. Now this time, not just broaden between my show, but I want to broaden across my sacrum. And watch, oh, that's more of my torso. I'm reclaiming space. I'm not just actually doing a yoga pose, right? I'm not just winning the upward facing dog. I'm actually claiming space. So now as I use this space, broaden across my sacrum, broad between my shoulder blades, can I get back to the ground, inner groin, inner knee, inner heel? We do this a lot. So then the next inhalation I take actually touches the earth, not just helps me rise toward the sky. Because prana follows consciousness more than it follows breath. And then come on back. Oh, so I don't like doing yoga just in small rooms. Like, so I'm coming forward again. Now I'm, upward facing dog strikes me as a small room from which I create strong velocity on the center of my chest, right? Like the, if it were a hose, it would have lots of water pressure, right? In, a, in upward facing dog. But I need to make sure it stays connected to the water source, which is actually the earth, right? So broadening across the sacrum, across the shoulder blades, like lift, lift under the car ones, that's more of the sky, right? Drop the shoulder blades down the skin, down the back. That's more of the earth. Now the inhalation and exhalation goes in and out of my spine, right? Holy cow, I'm fatiguing more on the right shoulder blade because I'm overworking it. God damn it, right? I got a pattern that overworks my right shoulder blade and then release. I wonder why that rotator cuff is more torn. Duh. It's because that's what I do, right? Inhale, take the arm up. Exhale, go this way. Oh, so I want the burst up, but I want the earth down, right? So all these things we talk about, just freaking do them, right? Add a dynamic twist to your sensation of space. Good, and then release. Did anyone feel waves of grief when I started talking about you have all this, spent your whole life with you and you get to visit? parts of your old life and you all have different parts of your body. Did anyone feel any of that? Like, oh my God, you thought about it in your own life? Did anyone feel any of that? Nod your head at least, for God's sakes, right? Holy crap. Can you believe I'm innocent? So are you. Like, inhale, take your arm off. You're not just guilty, for God's sakes. Told us that. <laughs> and go the other way. Take the arm behind you. So claim the space before you turn too much. Why is everyone so in a rush to twist? As if the sky part of the pose is the most important. Auger down, kick the earth, keep the earth. 
Inhale, expand, exhale, revolve. You're twisting empty space, not just your spine. Lift under the collarbones. Hit the shoulder blades down. Inner groin, inner knee, inner heel. Stay connected to the earth like upward facing dog. Open the space upward, but, and then come on back. But now you've got a dynamic twist in there. Right? So I'm kind of rocking back and forth because I overdid that. I just kind of strained my diaphragm. I don't know about you, right? I did a little bit of the diaphragm strain there. I'll survive. I'm pretty confident, right? And then up again because I'm getting, I'm reclaiming that open space, right? Because I want the space because I want to find my own time. Right? I want to the one great thing about the body is that through the sensation of space, it can bring my time into the present. That's what happened with Brit. So I'm sure you maybe, if you remember, I'm sure you remember everything I've ever taught. But have you ever heard me say um, that twists help grief? I have taught, taught a whole bunch of things about that, but directly or indirectly, right? So especially because I was saying, if you're touching all your time, you can feel that well up of like whatever, you know, of all your times. Right? I've thought a lot about why twists would help grief. And I think it's because they put a dynamic energy into the empty space. You're not just opening and not being willful. You're actually <laughs> turning the world. You're adding a dynamic thing in a twist to your empty space, which is why you wring out a dish rag. So you're reclaiming the space where the grief is lying, lying in there. Because one of the things that blocks our realization of space as a sensation is grief. We're scared to go there. The good thing about yoga is you don't have to confront all your fears about your space. You just have to twist, right? You just have to do the poses. You don't have to do all the psychological work. The only thing I warn you about is don't overdo it. Because when you don't do the psychological work all the time, sometimes you get too aggressive. Inhale, take your arm up. Exhale, revolve. So, Oh wait, before I start twisting and my mind wants to be in charge, I'm gonna sit here for a second and make sure my skin is touching the world around me. I wanna make sure I have Tadasana. So I've got my, my core channel, right? So when I do start to twist, I can twist from the core channel and transform the space in my body. And then, so do this one more gently, right? And start to turn. And uh, I remember I sometimes talk about a sprinkler behind you that you're turning the sprinkler, right? The water's flying everywhere. Turn the space around you. The world comes with you when you twist, especially the space behind you. Space behind you is like the shadow coming across your two-dimensional world, right? Good, and then come on back to center. Remember, we can only feel our time travel, like the shadow coming over, right? Our space. Man, I need to not get greedy. I need to live in the experience I have. Learned that the harder when I broke my femur bone. Right? Inhale expand into the space around me. Make sure I stay centered in the earth with Tadasana. Inhale and then exhale, revolve. Lift under the collarbones. Kiss the sky like Jimi Hendrix does with his guitar, but stay grounded in the earth. Open the space in your body. Twist it a little more with grace, with precision. Good, and then come on back to center. Be in the center. Ooh. 
about? Am I gonna let these twists change me? I don't know, what would change look like? I don't know, right? Back bend. Don't always get to know how I'm gonna change. I hate that, especially my protective mind, right? So as you lift the chest, go over the back of your chair, extend from the center of the chest, up the skin on the front of the chin. As you get that, make sure you keep the space between your shoulder blades. Open your, your, your spine long, your neck long. Good, and then release. So I notice this a lot with the back of my neck is that, is that I tend to get impatient and so I tend to, at the very end, because my mind wants to win, right? When I'm taking my head back, I actually shorten my neck, my spine, the spine part of my neck. As I take the head back, right? I try to win because my mind's impatient. Because my relationship to time, I'm not earning the space before I change the time. This isn't just about your neck except the neck turns out to be really important parts of your spine because it goes into our brain, right? All right, so we're gonna try to back bend again. I'm gonna ask you, what are the conditions you need to be elongated in your neck so you don't rush time, so you actually utilize the space in your neck as you do this next back bend? And don't tip your head back if it makes you dizzy, right? So. You can do it without going far back. So, and you're gonna find that it's earth again, right? So you wanna ground, I'm gonna to start to do the back bend, but right away, I already know to prepare the midline. I already know to make myself a conduit, make sure Tadasana is here, make sure I'm going the other direction first from the inner groin to the inner knee to the inner heel. And then I'm gonna set those conditions and let the ring, let's say a fire, come up from the earth, come up my legs through my torso, right? And now I'm gonna watch here because my impatience is gonna do this to the pose. It's gonna break the whole freaking flow of the water because my head, my mind is in a rush, right? Remember you need to leave it, move at multiple uh, accelerating times in a pose, right? So I'm gonna ground, I'm gonna anchor my chest, I'm gonna elongate my neck. And now as I put a tension here on the front of my chest to my chin, I'm gonna make sure I'm staying patient enough to see the back of my neck and make sure that's elongating as I take my head back. Good, and then I come back to center. So that space was there the whole time. Your mind was covering it up. Because it's in a rush. Because you don't believe in time travel. You don't believe in like different dimensions of time. Right? And different speeds. And there in yoga poses, you're often trying to have different velocities come through your body at different times. Right, but you don't have to know all that. Just like you don't have to have it in your memory. You just have to practice enough. Your brain will do it naturally. All right, so I'm gonna center again. We're gonna do another back bend here. I hope you're realizing these are gentle back bends. Right, we're not trying to stimulate the shit out of the world right now. Or out of you, right? We're actually just trying to like open again. Because time traveling through your space tends to deny freedom, right? You tend to lose, like people with PTSD tend to think and like their past constricts their freedom, right? It doesn't, but they don't know that. That's how, that's how the shadow appears to the mind, right? It looks like it's a loss of freedom, right? So I'm going to ground here. I'm going to exhale. I'm gonna to get to the empty spaces. I'm gonna very gently feel the skin on my body. 
right? Because I want to stay outward. I want to soften my jaw, not to go inward, but to go outward. I'm going to start to change gravity. I'm actually pushing on my legs to stay grounded. So I'm, I'm wanting to make sure that this, I stay connected to the earth, right? As I start to come into the bathroom. Now I'm going to go up, go down to go up, let it travel through my neck, broaden between the shoulder blades across the sacrum, elongate my neck. And then at the end, the thing I wanted to rush for, that's the finishing touch. But it only is finishing if I keep the back of my neck long. And then at the end, I just get to smile. I get to open the center of my chest and kiss the sky. Right? Good, and then release. I know it sounds barfy. Come on back. But, and it was Jimi Hendrix that made me think about it. Right? Kissing the sky with the center of your chest is not barfy at all. Do you know how to kiss the sky with the center of your chest? When it's not just a thought. Right? Do you know how to touch the tree 20 feet away when it's not just a thought? You realize the space. Right? And when you realize the space, you don't have to be threatened by your time. So sit for a second. Whatever space we're able to create, you're able to like create in your body. Have it. Let the breath move in and out of it. Keep your jaw soft, the skin on your face soft. Remember, your breath introduces movement through inhalation and exhalation but it also introduces cessation <clears throat> at the retentive part at the bottom and top, right? And it's all of it, the cessation and the movement, that's the fractal of existence. Our past isn't lost. It's just not directly sensed, but it's carried by your body, by your brain, which is your body. Nourish the vehicle of your transcendence, the workhorse. It's your body, not how smart you are. Incredibly gentle twist now. Take your right hand outside your left leg. I'm barely even moving, right? Other arm slay behind you. Don't go very far. Make sure you're moving with the entirety of your access to your midline. Inhale to lift your chest. Exhale to elongate. Dynamic energy through the empty spaces. Cleansing the empty spaces of the bad part of grief. Come back to center. Go the other way. Real gentle. There is no winning. There's only cleansing. The breath creates space. The action does the ringing. The spine does the integrating. It's funny, 
come on back to center. Your empty spaces restrict your spine. If your mind blocks them, so I'm moving around a little bit because I need a little rhythm because this is deep stuff, right? So I'm moving around a little bit to go, oh yeah. So I have a hard time when I'm time traveling to remember I have a body. I treat my body like the pack animal as opposed to the savior, right? It's the, the. So find some symmetry because we're going to do Shavasana. Symmetry is a grounding sensation. Helps you feel equanimity. It's very cool that we mirror our sides mirror each other. We don't just have one arm. We have two. Don't just have one leg. We have two. Around the spine. So now, soften the inside of your mouth. Allow the chair to hold you up. How do you surrender to support? How do you let something else hold your time? Resoften the organs of perception around the temples, the forehead, the inside of the mouth. Relax your belly to relax your throat. All things being equal, the center of your chest smiles. The mind usually gets in the way. Use balance. Space in the ankles and knees, the hips. Shoulders, the elbows, the wrists. Even your head. Feel your breath. Don't change it. Thank your body. Think it again. Start to bring yourself back. Slightly deeper inhalation. Slightly longer exhalation. When you're ready, open your eyes, let the light in slowly. It's a shot closing the door. And then open it.
So my body carries all of my times. My mind only gets limited access through what we call memory, right? But just sit for a second. And it's one of the big things I try to get across in waking is that I needed to reconnect all to all of my ages. So I'm just sitting here for a second in the choir. Without needing to be led by my mind, I'm allowing what's true. I'm a time traveler. And I have all of my ages. And it's a resource. Doesn't make me weaker. It makes me stronger. If I can get by the grief. So as I'm saying this, I'm rubbing my fingertips together really lightly. Okay, next finger, to make sure I have a sensation here. And it's a gentle sensation. One of the things I tried to say last week is if we can have more of the sensation of expansive time, we'll end up being less violent. It's very true. Our histories are hard. Human beings have not been good to each other. So a lot of us are trying to avoid it, right? And I wanna say like, hey, wait, we get to have all the times. And it makes me stronger, right? What I love about yoga is I can practice this as a sensation and not a thought. The sensation may only be like the shadow crossing over top, right, flying over me, because I don't get to like make it causal, but I can know it when it happened, right? All right, hands together, namaste.